Good morning. Today we're going to talk about control arms. I have some tubular control arms here. These are like Summit brand, Jags brand, Speedway Motors brand. Um, I'm not going to talk about the quality of them. The quality is fine. I don't have any issues with that. We're going to switch out these ball joints. I might do a video on that later. We're going to put some uh, Pro Forge ball joints in here, longer ball joints, and that's to help with uh, camber. So if you look at the specs on these, Summit Racing says that they don't change the geometry. Well, they do. Speedway Motors says they do. And uh, Speedway Motors, from what I know, used to actually build these. Now, the metal might come from overseas, but uh, they were built in-house at Speedway Motors, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. But what I had issues with was people say that tubular control arms were lighter than factory stamp control arms. And again, this is on a 72 Chevelle, so your A bodies, these are the same tubular control arms. Stamp metal is exactly what it sounds like. It's a piece of stamp material. And uh, these tubular, tubular arms, they look great. But when I read reviews about people saying they save 25 pounds, you're crazy. I didn't believe it. And uh, I haven't weighed anything yet, so we'll do it together. But after picking these up and touching all these parts, there is no way that you're saving weight switching to tubular control arms. And your goal shouldn't be to save weight. Your goal should be to improve the geometry of your A-body, uh, suspension geometry. Your goal should be to have a heavier duty material that, uh, that allows for higher performance applications. And again, you don't buy this stuff to save weight. That's not... <laughs> I mean, if, if we did, that'd be cool, but... Uh, 25 pounds is, is uh, crazy. So let's get into it. Looking at just the upper, tubular upper weighs right at about 10 pounds. The stamp upper with the, uh, we'll put the shock absorber on it or the, whatever you want to call it, is at 12 pounds. So the stamped upper is 12 pounds. And it's the same setup. We have the ball, uh, the ball joint on both and we have the bushing on both or uh, whatever you want to call it. So the upper, stamped upper was two pounds heavier. Let's look at the lowers. <clears throat> These lowers are much beefier and I think they're going to weigh a lot more. Alright, so we have 16 pounds. Stamped lower It's actually a little bit lighter, so it's 14 pounds. Uh, but we have a little more equipment on this uh, on a stamp lower, so I would say they're about the same. I would say altogether they're about the same. So if you just weigh our drums, right, the drums, the brakes, compared to uh, calipers and rotors, we're going to do that next uh, with the spindle, of course, because the spindle still attached to those drums. So let's measure that. So this drum setup weighs 30 pounds even. And again, it's got the spindle attached. Rotor first, 22 pounds. Spindle, 32 pounds. Caliper, 40, 43 pounds. The bracket brings us to 44 pounds. And that's not counting the bearings, so we could add these bearings on there, that add a pound or so. But you're definitely not saving weight. Now let's look at what I mean by uh, improved geometry. <clears throat> Just comparing these uppers, so if we look at the angle of this upper, right, for a uh, caster, and we compare it to the new upper, You can see that it shifted this ball joint over. Yeah, it definitely shifted the ball joint over. The mounting surface is here on this one, right? So it shifted the ball joint over about a half inch or so. And it looks like it's inward. Yeah, so it's over and down. So that improved camber and caster. 
So I hope that helped you guys out. Again, I, I just did this because uh, I wanted to stop reading articles about people saying they saved 25 pounds switching over to this. No way. It's about the same weight and uh, what we gain is performance. 